take two of this video because something went a bit weird in the last version of the video. Uh, I thought these were two identical lights. It turns out the circuitry is, well, they get different circuit boards in them. Let me show you what these are. These are colour changing LED lights from Poundland and basically speaking, I'll have to cover it because it's those super duper dim ones, but you'll be able to see the colour of the LED goes red, green, blue, etc. Well, it should go red, green, blue, but because they're running at very low current, the red tends to dominate the colours where the red and blue and red and green are supposed to be lit, or white, where they're all lit. Red is the only one that tends to light. I shall open these. Note that this one has a matte finish and this one has a glossy finish. That's important because they've got different circuit boards. So I'll pop them open, revealing a long thin circuit board. And I'll pop this one open to show a distinctly squarer circuit board. Here we go. And there are some circuitry differences. Let's just pop this off as well then. I'm going to modify one of these. I'm going to stick uh, something different into it. Now this one for a start, the LED is skewed over at an angle. I'll tell you what, I'm not interested in that one then. I'm going to modify this one, it's easier. But I'll show you the circuitry in these first because I've already taken a picture of the circuit board, uh, which is here. And I shall focus down onto there and we'll take a look at this. So this has, what's the best way around for this? The best way around for this, that's good enough. It's the usual arrangement. It's got a little chip. The chip is called a YX8018 and it's a dedicated control chip for these uh, standard solar lights. It does a few things. It acts as a rectifier between the solar panel and the button cell just off shot here so it can continually trickle charge it but it also senses the voltage from the lithium set the, the lithium cell the solar cell and when it goes below a certain level it knows it's dark and it turns on a little circuit inside that pulses this inductor this is a 270 microhenry inductor doctor the value of that inductor uh, determines the basic current consumption and brightness of the led there is a difference to the normal stuff. Normally, a cheap solar light would just be the LED, the inductor, that, and that's more or less it. This one is an extra diode and capacitor. So what happens is that because this, this uh, nickel metal hydride cell is only 1.2 volts, this uses the inductor to boost it up and it can then drive an LED, which is a higher voltage. This is a colour changing LED, it would keep resetting to red because it's a series of pulses it gets, and every time it went off, it would reset to the start its colour sequence so it would just glow red, which is the first colour. That's where this comes in. When this pulses, its current is diverted through this diode uh, and then charges this little 100 nanofarad capacitor, which then keeps the memory in the LED and means it does the full colour change thing. This is the switch that uh, will corrode in most lights. And you can just basically, if you look at the three pads at the back, you'll see that two are often connected. One is uh, separate put a solder blob between those two uh, because it's only the ship the switch is only really there normally for uh, shipping just to stop the battery being over discharged however there's a problem with this circuit board let me show you the schematic here's the schematic and they've combined two different circuits from the manufacturer let's uh, pop this one off as well the two main differences between these circuit boards if you look at the schematic, you will see that I've drawn two switches in. One between the solar panel and the cell, and one between the uh, solar panel cell and the circuitry. This one, the matte finish one, with the slim circuit board, has the switch there, so it isolates the cell completely. When you click switch that off, it's not going to be able to put any charge into the cell um, at all when you've got that switch off. The other one with the square circuit board and the shiny finish under here, it does allow you to actually, it's put the switch there so that even when you get it turned off, the solar panel is still connected, connected to the nickel metal hydride cell and it will actually still charge it. Quite handy to have that feature though there aren't many applications you'd use it. The 
other main difference is that this one, which is the better one, uses a Schottky diode, which is a drop of 0.2 volts. This one uses a 1N4148 diode, which is a, a 0.6 volt drop. It also has what looks like a different value of inductor. 220 microhenry, which means this one's going to be a bit brighter, but the battery is going to be shorter. So once again, this one's the winner. However, they both got a design flaw. This is the little chip that runs this. And the solar charging circuit is very simple. The solar panel comes up to here. It's common, the positive of the solar panel and the nickel metal hydride cell are common together on the positive rail. But the negative has that little diode inside that basically allows the solar panel to charge via that diode, the nickel metal hydride cell, and also means that at night time, it won't leak back through the solar panel, which can sometimes be quite leaky when in the dark. That also goes to a sense input that it measures the voltage from the solar panel to tell when to turn it on. When it does turn it on, it pulses this little transistor at very high frequency, about tens of kilohertz, to pulse this inductor. And when it does so, it effectively creates this sort of high voltage collapsing spike that is used to light the LED. But there's a couple of ways you can use that. The other thing this seems to do that doesn't seem to be mentioned too much is that when the voltage into it, 1.2 volt here, when it drops to about 1 volt, these usually shut off. It's quite good. It means it saves the cell from being over discharged. That's the thing that occasionally you'll see them go blink, 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 night, or just when, uh, when they're misbehaving, they sometimes blink as well. So this inductor, what actually happens here is that when the transistor turns on, this end of the inductor is positive and this end goes negative. When it turns off, it builds a magnetic field up and then when it turns off, this end goes positive and this end goes negative. So that's the one we're interested in. We're interested in this being negative, this being positive. In the case of this LED here, the positive will go through the diode and then through the LED when it, the magnetic field collapses. And normally with this configuration, you'd have this diode here and then you'd have a capacitor across that LED to actually hold the charge across it to store the sort of memory of the colour changing. The other configuration you can do, which has advantages, is to actually have the configuration with the LED going down to the negative rail with the capacitor across it. And in this instance, when the inductor's turned on, it builds a magnetic field up. But normally, you'd think, why, why doesn't the current flow from the battery through the inductor, through the diode, through the LED? And the answer is, the LED has at least two volts before it will conduct. That adds another small voltage. It's nowhere near the 1.2 volts of the nickel metal hydride, so it won't normally conduct. It can only conduct once it starts pulsing this inductor. But when it does so, if you think of it this way, the negative of this nickel metal hydride cell is connected to the uh, bat, the LED's negative as such. And when this uh, is collapsing field in this, you get the positive is then connected to the negative end, and then the positive is connected to the LED, and it basically puts the nickel metal hydride and this with its higher voltage spike in series and just results in a slightly higher voltage to push through into the LED, which uh, has advantages. But what they've done here is very odd. They didn't put that capacitor there, and they didn't put this LED here. They put the capacitor down to the negative rail, but have the LED to the positive rail, which means that it can put a, a charge on this capacitor, but to actually keep the memory, it now has to find a path through the rest of the circuitry back to the negative rail. That's weird. And it's not like they did it just once. They did it in both these circuits, which is strange. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe they thought, hey, it worked before, we'll do it again. But this is not... The manufacturer has a data sheet that has like loads of examples of circuits. This is not one of them. It's very strange. Right, I'm going to make a modification now. I have... Let's get the soldering iron on. So I have got a little Molexy type socket. This is something I've done in the past, I like it. You could, basically you can replace the LED with anything you want. I prefer fixed color versus the color changing. Color changing is nice enough, but the fixed color has the advantage of being more efficient. Uh, and it's just basically a lot simpler. And you can get to pick your favorite color. Blue is a nice one. 
But by putting a socket in like I'm doing here, I should have shown you that pair, but I basically these bits of wire, I put the crimps of the socket on, it's a standard little Molexi socket. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in in place of the LED in this circuit board. Um, and then I'm going to uh, just plug an LED into it because that gives me much more options. Now I'm just looking here, is this going to have room to go through? Am I going to have to widen that? I'm going to have to widen that up a bit. I shall do that. So the soldering iron is on, it's just come up to temperature. I shall remove this LED, noting that polarity is marked on the circuit board, but I'm actually also just double checking that. I'm going to flow some solder onto both these connections here. Let's uh, get down a little bit closer to this. I'm going to put fresh solder on because the lead-based solder melts easier than the horrible lead-free solder. I've ranted about the lead-free solder so many times in the past. I will not rant again. Well, maybe later. I'm now pulling the LED with the fingers at the other side and I'm going to heat both those solder joints at once until it just pops out. Then there's a couple of options for getting rid of all the excess solder. You could just try and wipe it off if the hole's quite big. You could wipe and, you know, you could flick it. Let's get this notepad out of the way. Or you could use desoldering braid, or you could use that terrible technique that also works really well. Hold the circuit board like this, put it in the solder iron, then tap it. And sometimes, if it's a large mass joint, the solder will fling out. But in this instance, it's decided not to, so it won't. Right, desoldering braid. I prefer desoldering braid as a desoldering agent. I could use a desoldering pump, but the braid works really well, particularly if you add a bit of flux to it. It takes everything off. It provides an absolutely clean path just by absorbing all that solder into the braid. So now I'm going to put my little socket in. Now what I should have done here, I'm going to leave a bit of slack just in case I need to align this socket up a little bit with the hole that goes through the case. So I'm going to stand it off by about, say, do I have much room here? Probably not. I maybe won't do this. I maybe will just butt it right up hard against it. I'm kind of want to try that now and see if it's going to work. So this is the glossy one that was in before. I'm going to have to make that hole much bigger. One moment, please. The hole is bigger. I used the classic uh, twist a pair of scissors in it technique. I'm actually going to put this on here. And now let's see, what's the best way to do this? Uh, I'm going to put it on before I solder this. So I'm going to place this on and see if I can get the screw into the hole here. Is this going to work? I think it is. Oop. Maybe I'll just feed that in afterwards. Oh, that's a terrible idea because you know what will happen. It won't actually go in easily. I'll try it round the other way. This is when things go wrong, but you know what? That happens in real life, so it's fine. Rightio, I think I shall put the screw back in to hold it in place. And then I shall solder that. I'm going to have to butt it up hard against the circuit board to leave room for the LED. There's not a lot of space. I'll probably use one of the little, uh, what they call the straw hat LEDs. They're very low profile. I'd like to put a blue LED in this, but I don't have any clear blue LEDs. All of the LEDs I've got are diffused or fancy flashing ones. I'm going to have to dig around because uh, I do have some somewhere, but I just can't find them. Let's solder this now by stuffing my pinky up the hole. Classy. And uh, flooding some solder on. Okay, that's one connection. And that's the other connection. Now, I should have actually noted which way the positive was there. But now that soda can always pop it off and uh, look. Because I'll have to mark the socket to show which side is the positive and which is the negative. Yeah, I'll pop it off. Won't take that long. Better safe than sorry. So I've completely obscured the bit that says positive and negative. There it is. Positive. Where's a Sharpie? Sharpie. So 
So what should happen now is if I stick my choice of LED in here, let's use this one. And I turn this on, it should light nice, bright white. Excellent. That's perfect. Right. I shall stick it back in now. It's good to modify lights like these. You can get them to your exact liking. You can also wire more than one LED in series. If you wanted a nice turquoisey light or cyanish color or a purple, you could wire red and blue in series or blue and green in series. Or maybe you want a pastel shade. You could put a white in series of the blue to give a, a specific color. Okay, that is it. Uh, I shall just screw this back together now and try this out. Will that LED protrude down too far? No, it shouldn't. It should be absolutely fine. That's perfect. I'm just going to say it's perfect anyway. It might not be perfect. I shall put the screws back in. I'm trying to remember which screws were in this one. I'll go with these ones. And if they don't fit very well, I'll just use brute force and ram them in. They seem to fit comfortably. Good. And now the question is, it's, bit, it's still a bit light, so uh, I'm going to have to uh, turn this on. And then take the exposure off and turn the light off here and see... Ah, it's not bad, is it? That's a nice enough colour. It's a... Uh, I wouldn't... It's warm white-ish. It's off... It's not cold white, which is good because that would be rather harsh. That's not a bad result. Uh, I kind of wanted blue, but this will do at the moment. I can... Now that I've done that, I can swap any colour of LED in there that I want. Oh, hold on. I can do that right now. Uh, let me just grab an LED. If you do this, I would recommend that you turn it off when you're changing the LED because if you don't, then the open circuit voltage can fly up quite high. That's quite uh, well recessed in there. This is where it all goes wrong, isn't it? Yes, so many opportunities to go wrong. It's fine. Never have regrets. So the positive, the long lead is going into the, uh, the one that's marked positive. Turn it on. It's blue. That's not bad. Actually, I prefer that over the warm white. That is what I'm going to stick with. So, right, one moment, I'm going to bring the lighting back. And that is it. The little task is finished. So these lights came from Poundland. There's really not much stock this year. This is at the end, well, the, I hope so, at the end of the pandemic. And I have to say that it's really impacted uh, the stock of things like the, the usual stock of solar lights. So uh, Poundland, this, this is basically what they've got. And at the point of making this video, uh, the last time I was in, they basically it was an empty tray with none left because uh, they were struggling to get stock, as I say. But these uh, lights make a good base. If you have a favourite light, you can take the circuit board out of it and you can stick this into the other light to repair it. Just use it as a sort of donor board. It's cheap enough and it's useful just for the materials like this bubbled acrylic, which is nice. Also note, if you go and buy these, if they got them in stock at your local dollar store or pound shop, take a look at them because the quality of the actual bubbled acrylic can vary. And also the transparency, if you look down the end of them, can vary as well. Some of them are quite matte. You want a nice clean finish, although you can do stuff about that yourself. You can polish them up and uh, transmit more light down them. Another thing to look for is uh, the LED being pointed at a funny angle. With the colour changing ones, it has to be at a slight angle to actually, because the LEDs are off to the side. So with the lens, you have to set that slight angle. But for the fixed colours, uh, it's, you know, you can just get it really bright. Some of them are just, they're pointing at such a weird angle that it's quite dim. By the time you straighten them up, it looks a lot brighter. Lots of hacking you can do with your solar garden lights. But there we go. That's it. The modification has been done. I now have my custom LED swappable solar light. And uh, I'm going to put it in the window. I'm not going to put it outdoors. Because uh, I quite like just having lights in the window that just glow at night like little ornaments. Good result.